All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you, brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity and with charity. I am the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Coming to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, the willing to be edifying. And, um,. <laughs> Pretty much what I want to uh, talk about in this lesson is uh, I recently saw the Ant-Man movie, Ant-Man Quantumania, which is the third movie of Ant-Man. And, um, you know, uh, we hear in the truth, see things through a spiritual eye, through the lenses of the scriptures. And... Um, you know that's how we see all life you know around us and in this movie um you know you got the main villain who's king the conqueror who conquers the worlds you know in different timelines and different worlds and different multiverses right in the movie that's uh what he does and then obviously you got the so-called heroes that are like oh we can't let you do this this is bad you're gonna kill lots of people we have to stop you blah 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 right um you know and then when it comes to this present world uh and what we know in the scriptures is um Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is gonna come. Yahweh's gonna the Heavenly Father is gonna send his son Yahweh Shai um to take this kingdom to take it to take it by force and when he takes it by force it's gonna be a lot of uh, uh let's just go ahead and grab it um let me see, I believe this is Daniel's 2. Daniel 2. Or right, let me search it up. Um... Might have been Daniel 7. Yeah. Uh, this is Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, this present kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Okay, the saints, the saints of the Most High, right? The Most High is going to send his son, he's going to send his angels, he's going to send his armies uh, to take this kingdom by force. All right. The scriptures say the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Okay. Now let's read this one in Daniel 2 and 44. And in Daniel 2 and in Daniel 7, it uh, breaks down to you the four main kingdoms. That will reign upon the earth. Alright. Each having their time to rule. And each having their uh, downfall. And this present kingdom. Is no different. Okay. And then after these four. Kingdoms reign. Then. Alright. It says Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Right? That is when the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. Alright? It's not going to be left to other people. But it's going to break and consume all these kingdoms. And it's going to stand forever. Okay? Let's get Isaiah... Um, what's that? 66. Let me see. Can't 
Give me one second. I got it. It might have been 65. Okay, this is uh, Isaiah 66. Uh, Isaiah 66 and 13, as one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Okay, because the Most High is coming to save his people, and his people are the Israelites. All right, he's not coming to save all nations and all peoples. It says, and when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. So the Most High has enemies. Okay. Starting with who? Esau, Edom. Read Psalms, the 83rd chapter. It gives you a list of the Lord's enemies. Behold, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have consulted against thy hidden ones. Okay, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. This is what they consulted together to do, to destroy us, to destroy our name, to destroy our memory and our connection back to the Heavenly Father. Okay, but, <laughs> hey man, can't, you can't do that. Alright, you might have been able to do it for a time. But the Spirit of the Lord, the will of the Lord, all right, who can resist His will? He's controlling you too, Esau. All right, so it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with His chariots like a whirlwind to render His anger with fury and His rebuke with flames of fire. Right? The scripture saying, uh, Revelations 1 and 7, Behold, He cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him and those that pierced him. Right? Is that talking about a literal cloud? What's it talking about when it says chariots? Right? These are the spaceships or the UFOs, whatever you want to call it. All right? That's what's coming. The Lord's host, the Lord's army. Right? To do what? To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. That's a lot. That's a lot of death. Okay. Let's come down. All right, this is, uh, I'm going to jump down to verse 22. It says, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Now, this is not talking about the entire uh, planet earth being destroyed and then made anew. All right, it just means it's going to be under new rule and under new authority. All right, now some places are going to be destroyed. The main place that's going to be destroyed is here in America. This place is going to be a desert. That's going to be destroyed. All right. Um, but when it's when you read the new heavens and new earth in Revelation, right, the word new is the word kainos, which means a fresh or refreshed. That just means it's going to be new power or new rulership. Establishing the earth. Right. It says. And it shall come to pass. from That from one new moon to another. And from one Sabbath to another. Shall all flesh come to worship before me. saith the Lord. Right. Because the kingdom is going to be the Lord's. It's going to be Israel's. And it's going to be ruled. In righteousness. Okay. And they shall go forth. And look upon the carcasses of the men. 
that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be in a boring to all flesh. All right. So this is necessary. This has to happen. All right. And this is why, um, you know, vocab want to give us a bad name. They want to they, they want to destroy everything. You know, salvation is for everybody. What are they talking about? This is bad. They're bad people. Right. And yeah, but this is what the scriptures say. All right, you cannot deny this. All right, this is Isaiah 2 and 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that a mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay, so in the last days, the mount of the Lord's house or the government, right? The government, the new world order, the real new world order, right, will be established by the heavenly father by his son king david on down okay this is going to be the, the new superpower not russia not us not china right and yes the other nations will come and learn the law learn the ways of the lord but they won't be perfect like uh the israelites will be perfect all right we're gonna have to still beat their ass here and there you know, they're still going to be going off here and there. We're still going to correct them. Okay. It says, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Because in this world and in this kingdom is nothing but war. It's nothing but wickedness. It's nothing but darkness. All right, but when the kingdom of heaven is established upon the earth, all these weapons of war are going to be turned into farming tools. All right, meaning they're going to serve us. Okay. Uh, this is Isaiah 9. In 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay. Again, this is when the kingdom of heaven will be established. It's going to be ruled. Uh, in judgment and justice. From henceforth even forever. Alright. It's going to be world peace. Because Esau is not going to be ruling it. All right, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 24. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Okay? And that's what we go out every week to prophesy of. The return of... Of Yahweh Shai, right? Whom the Father will send. And when Yahweh Shai comes with his angels and the hosts of heaven, right? And the saints of the Most High, they're going to take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. 
Yahweh is going to deliver up the, his, uh, the kingdom to his father, man. Right? And as we read in Isaiah, it's going to be a lot. The slain of the Lord shall be many, man. He's going to come with his whirlwind and flames of fire, man. With the chariots of God. All right, and yeah, people might, if, if they first hear this, they might get scared or be like, no, that's wrong, you know, but it has to happen. All right, and this is why vocab tries to paint us as uh, in a bad light, right? So this is uh, Second Ezra chapter 4 and 28, but as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that it is sown with good. Alright, so this present evil world that's full of wickedness and destruction, war, alright, and darkness will have to be rooted out in order for us to plant the good. Alright, for that which is sown with good to come. It says, for the grain of evil seed has been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness has it brought up until this time? Look how ungodly and wicked this world has been since the time of Adam. And how much how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? Right? Uh, the threshing is literally the, the literal end of the world. Uh, which uh, hasn't came yet. So, meaning... Wickedness and evil will continue to abound and increase until the day, the great day of the Lord. Okay, but it has to happen, man. And this is what why Yahweh Bashim Yahushai needs to return to put it into all this wickedness, to put it into all this evil and war and destruction in the earth. All right, we'll go ahead and end off with a uh, Sirach 10 and 4. This is Sirach 10 and 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. And that's plain, you know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Lord willing, this video was edifying. And as always, our honor, glory, and praises goes to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rukha, Kudash, double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone. And until the next time, Shalom.